All right, so um, so welcome to another edition of Romantic Games. So first game we're gonna take a look at is by one of the viewers' requests. You know, we're gonna take a look take a look at one of Max Oiwa's games, and this is like one of the most interesting games that I found, which he won, and which was kind of uh, you know, it wasn't like technically romantic because it was 1950s, but it was a romantic in the chess style and then the complications that followed. It's actually, you can also read more about it in the Candidates Zurich book. It's from 1953, so the analysis are actually from there. Um, but anyway, so it was a fun game, so, you know, hopefully you guys enjoy. So, um, this was a... King's Indian defense, Nidorf played. As you guys know, Nidorf was, you know, Miguel, Miguel Nidorf was the first inventor of a famous Nidorf defense in the Sicilian defense. So black played e5, which leads to a very sharp line. Now, c5, e5, whenever we see both pawns pushed like that, it usually leads to a very double-edged struggle. So objectively speaking, I think White should play something like e4, knight e2, castle, play with a simple space advantage, and hopefully go for long squeeze. But again, this would not be such a fun game if White would play like this. Usually, in order for the game to be, you know, a jewel, like a jewel, it needs to be something a little bit creative in the beginning. So here we are, bishop g5, first going for this pin, giving up the bishop pair, and following up, okay, so if d6, his idea was to go queen d2, and then this pin is very unpleasant. So black goes for h6. And now white went for a very double-edged but very creative option. Pawn d6. And this was probably done in conjunction with bishop g5. This was kind of connected with each other. Because the idea of that is that now black is shutting down the bishop. And uh, black will have a hard time, harder time, getting all his development in. However, that move is very risky, pawn on d6. And according to the computer, the computer doesn't really approve it. Because the computer can defend everything. But from a practical standpoint of view, it's, it was a very strong idea. So black played knight c6. e3. b6. And now white played a very nice move, bishop d5. No way back. King h8. Okay, that that move is to free this pawn once the queen moves, so the pawn can like get rid of that knight on e4. So knight e4, queen d8. However, white continues his initiative play. h4. There is no retreating when we're attacking, right? We need to continue playing very energetically. f5. Knight g5. So white is threatening knight f7. So what does black do? He doesn't care. He goes bishop b7, completes his development. So now what should white do? Should he execute? Well, if he does this, then after this, and followed by queen f6 and e4, black would have tons of compensation for the exchange, and it would be black, who is much better. Black would have the initiative. So white did not go all this far just to be end up having to be on the defensive side after all that. So what does white do? Adds more fuel to the fire with the move g4. And really adding, you know, more attackers into that king and trying to really bust open that already shivery king. e4. I think at some point there was a rook move rook b8, which might have been... Uh, a better option just to try to trade off this bishop e4 though is a very logical move opening up this bishop but he does allow this knight control over their four square so the move was double-edged maybe it was not the best practical decision by black so white plays knight e2 of course who cares about the pawn in b2 in a complicated position like this that pawn is meaningless bishop takes b2 knight f4 and now as we could see, white has three pieces attacking and also pawns, potentially. Could play a big part of it as well. So black is ready. It's very dangerous for black. For example, if he takes on a1, then 
What do you guys think white should do then? How should white try to execute an attack in the best way? Yes, Ashish? King G7. The best move is knight g6 was correct, but here g takes f5. It was probably the best move. Because, again, it's not about the material, it's all about that king. If we take the rook, you know, we're going to get checked. And then, like, queen takes f8, and then we lose most of our attack. Our attack loses steam. If we do this, then also, I mean, move like queen f6 will, you know, kind of force us to trade queens so again we have to if we're gonna play like this we have to continue playing energetically takes and after this king f1 let's say if this you have queen h5 and the lines are very complicated but black is in very very big danger black has to play super precisely just not to lose right away i think objectively position is roughly equal but from a practical standpoint of view i would say white is almost winning so that's why black Played queen f6, combining attack and defense. Threatening bishop takes f1, a1 again, like really winning the rook, and defending g6. So now what white should do? Okay, takes, natural. So now black could, instead of taking on a1, could do g takes f5. Maybe that was a better practical decision. In which case, white might play something like this. This, knight g6 here rook g1 and the game is still very messy again if you want even more details there is the suri buch the analysis is all in there but here um i don't want to flood you with too much analysis i just want to show you the beautiful game so in the game uh bishop takes a1 was played again it's not about how sound it is romantic games are very often as i mentioned before not completely sound Knight takes g6, king g7, knight takes e4. And it looks like black's fine because knight takes c3, there's queen takes f2. But just simple knight f4. And this is a retreating move, but it sets up new forces. The rook on g1, and it sets up it sets up white for you know for potential regrouping. That puts black into more trouble. So, for example, black played king h8, which allows white to recoup the material, and now white is only down in exchange, with still very powerful compensation. But what would what would white do if bishop e5? Well, if bishop e5, then knight g3. And then where does the queen go? The queen is almost trapped. Only move to not get forked or lose the queen is queen h7. But then queen g4 followed by knight g6 and white is winning same thing happens after this and then black will either get mated or get forked so king h8 was played and now white was able to at least recoup the bishop you know a very important bishop because that bishop was attacking and defending so now let's take stock very quickly. White is down in exchange for one pawn. But white still has a lot of compensation, a lot of attacks. So we can definitely say white's play worked. Rook e8. Now what should white do? The knight lost the c4 square. So what does white do? Knight's coming to g3 anyway. 3-2. Another path he finds to really get into... Uh, the heart of black's position. Rook g8. Maybe knight d8 was a little bit more tenacious here. Rook g8 was played. Yeah? Before, knight to e2. Mm -hmm. Rook to g1 would have worked. Um, would rook g1 have worked? Knight to g5 or 6. That's a good question. Um... I think I can probably play rook f6. Okay. 
But yeah, it was a, certainly an interesting option, definitely something to consider. But looks like knight e2 is harder to defend against. So rook g8. So the idea is maybe there's also bishop a6 instead of knight d8. Bishop a6 trying to go knight e5. At some point he needed to get that knight into defense. Uh, he played rook g8. h5. So if he takes, again, that would be black would be very happy now this bishop is unopposed the knight can move suddenly black has very good play so again we shouldn't get greedy that bishop is worth a rook h5 we want to go here and keep that bishop monstrous bishop now knight g3 so if now the queen has nowhere good to go so he had to take if, if here you probably go knight e4 so rook takes g3, f takes g3, rook takes c3, king f2. And now material is equal, but white's piece placement is much better. And that's why white is winning in this position. Rook e8. And now white played another, I think, very nice move. Again, queen a1 looks tempting, but it doesn't do much, king h7. So what does white do? He trades off black's most active rook, most active piece, rook on e8. Because the rook on e8 controls a lot of piece, a lot of key squares. It's one of black's most active pieces. And the rook on h1 is the one piece that doesn't do anything anymore. Once the pawn's on h5. So therefore, white trades that rook off and tries to weaken black's uh, back rank. So black took. White took. And, uh, and if he moves the rook away? If he moves the rook away, I think then... You know, now white rook is even more powerful. Now you can play a move like queen a1 probably or even king g2, threatening knight g6. Here I think white is just having a very powerful initiative. So then it's clear if you have to move back away, then it's clear that it's in white's favor. So black took. And now in this position, if black plays knight e5, you have to still be careful. You can't play here because of knight d3. But you have to do queen takes e5, queen takes e5, knight g6. So king g7, queen comes in. And now a nice finishing touch. Now the knight is also good for defensive purposes. And now the queen and the bishop and the pawn take care of the rest. So black played here at least to defend d7. And black resigned because after king takes h5, there's knight f4 or bishop f7. Yeah, so this is one of these Eva immortals, I shall say. This is one of these beautiful games by Eva that I've noticed. But maybe there are some other jewels that I haven't noticed, but this one is, I think, a very famous one. All right, now that we did an Eva, Eva game, let's take a look at some of the older classics because after all they would fit more for the you know romantic era so let's look at the game between Steinitz and Lasker um, from their world championship match from 818 no actually it's not from championship match it's London International it was already after Lasker was a world champion and Steinitz was already quite old I mean he was like you know at the end of his career definitely but still, you know, it was a very interesting game. e4, e5, knight c3, knight f6. This is called the Vienna. d5, d3. And in this position, uh, the most common move is e6, f4. Uh, but in the game, he played knight c6. And here I think e5 is kind of okay for white. But as you know, sometimes again, in order to create an immortal classic, there has to be a little bit of inaccuracies in the beginning. Okay, all these moves are pretty natural. Here white should probably just castle kingside. 
And now it's black who is getting pieces into the game. Of course, black does not trade that off because that would help the white bishop get in the game. So bishop d7, knight g5. All right, who can tell us how should black now continue the attack? White's plan is clear. He's attacking the pawn and he also wants to go bishop f3. Stanius thinks he has everything in control. But in fact, it's not so. Position is very dangerous for, for white. So how should black play here? Ashish? Knight h4, very good. And also attack g2. So if bishop f3, then, you know, we can of course just take that. But still, that might have been a better option. But white played knight f3. All right, so knight f3 is kind of a silent draw offer. Do we take it? No, of course not. How should black continue his attack? You've seen this game? Okay, let's like give, give someone else a chance then. Rook takes e2, queen takes e2. Bishop e5. Um, yeah, well, you, again, you can do that, but that only, I think, gets back the exchange. But, I mean, where is your attack? Just going to be some normal position, right? So, yeah, it's certainly a possible, you know, continuation. It's not a blunder, but, you know, when you see a, a line you like, let's look for something better. Even though this certainly is a candidate idea, but let's look for something even better. Good try, though, Addy. Bishop H two King takes. King G one. Yeah, but again, uh, that line. I mean, I think there has quite a few. I mean, I can take on h4, right? I can do rook f2. I mean, it's you're, you're kind of hoping a little bit for like one line to work, but again, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the idea is similar, but it's um, you don't want to give away too many pieces. Bishop to h3 then? Bishop h3, I think I can take, or even I can take the, this one. Bishop g3. I think I take here. Mm, yeah, but okay, I can do this. You know, it's, I can do bishop g4 check. Like I have many options to be okay here, right? It's, in general, whenever you go for a complicated line, that you want to sacrifice Addy, it's important to keep in mind that you have to consider like how many options he has to realistically defend, right? If there are like many ways that he can be potentially fine, then it's not as likely to work, right? You want to make sure when you go for a line that he doesn't have too many options to like, you know, defend very easily, right? You want to make sure he doesn't have an easy defense at least, that in every line you're having a very promising attack. That, that's the idea. Not just like putting all your eggs in one basket, hoping like one line somehow works out when there are like three lines that might not go in our favor. Did we look at knight to g2 yet? No, we didn't, and that is the correct move. Yeah, knight takes g2, yes. Because after king takes g2, bishop takes h3. Exclaim, follow up. And now, yeah, we cannot do this anymore because this would lead to an unstoppable attack. King of two is mate. And after this, there's a rook lift coming. Then rook h4, and then we get rid of the knight, and then we mate. So it's a forced mate, basically, in a few moves. There's also rook g4, and then, you know, rook g4, rook h4, just too many ideas for, 
for black. So this is winning. So therefore, white had nothing better than to go king f2. But now we already know that black has a very promising initiative because, you know, I mean, you have two pawns for the piece and you could even recoup materials, so you're not going to be down material. But it's like, it's good enough to calculate the line with this, where you're at least making a draw, but you're pretty sure that you're even winning. But also to know that at, if he doesn't take, that at the very least, you're going to be doing quite well. But now let's try to find the best way to continue the attack. Do we take the rook on f1 or is there something better for black? Oh, yeah, that was an accident. So who can tell us how should we follow up on the attack for black? Uh, yeah, Adi? Um, yeah, bishop h2 is interesting if he takes, but chess is not checkers, right? We don't have to take. What are you threatening? Like, what if I play like rook h1, let's say? Yeah, I mean, it's too slow. Again, it's a very important to anticipate your opponent's best ideas, right? Don't just assume he'll just let you get like all these free moves, right? It's important to anticipate opponent's best defenses. Okay, good try though. Any other idea? The bishop on d6 is already good, right? We don't need to touch it. We need to improve the pieces that are not yet playing. And sometimes if all, if all our heavy pieces are playing, we need to find another way. Do you, do you remember? Putting you on the spot here a little bit. G5. You're close. It was g5, g4. But I think if we go right away, then we're taking it. So that's why I just prepared with f6. Yeah, I mean, you can actually do a very slow move, but the point is that this g5, g4 is just a very powerful idea, and white cannot do much. I mean, again, you know, you could afford to play a little bit slowly, because you're not down that much material, right? You're down a piece for two pawns, so that means you could kind of afford to play a little bit slower, and still, you know, have a very promising initiative. But this is what my first ever coach we used to describe as a fifth strength. So in other words, you know, we have already like the ro queen, rook, bishops, you know, the major, the major attacking pieces in the game. But sometimes that's not quite enough. And like, we need a little pawn to really, you know, do the final, have the final say. You know, do a little last, you know, disturbing of harmony to really make the attack sort of complete. You know, many, in many attacks you see the pawn has the final say. And that's actually very instructive in a lot of ways. So even better than, you know, bishop takes f1. Because after rook g1, it's already very hard for white to defend. g5. I mean, I guess you could have tried rook h1. But, but then I think you could probably play queen h5. And then if the knight moves, you have queen h4. And still, this is a threat. And still, I don't see a good way to defend. Although maybe there is bishop f1. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he should have tried. Yeah, maybe he should have tried that one. Maybe that was a little better try. Yeah, maybe queen f5 is, is best in that case. Yeah, queen f5 probably in that case is best. So, and then g5, g4. And after this, you know, maybe... Uh... Ah, then, then you can do this, I think, yeah. Yeah, then you can do this. And if he has to go king g1, then... Oh, wait, well, wait. Yeah, you can probably just go queen g4 anyway. Threatening this and... So, black still has a very strong attack, as you saw with the evaluation, is like minus 2 or something. So, black is still, you know... But maybe that was a better try, rook h1. He played here, he decided to give up, he give back the piece. But now black is just uh, materially equal, but has all these open files and... You know, white's not really long for this game. Queen d3, bishop f4, rook h1. 
giving up the exchange, I mean, what else? Otherwise, bishop e3 is coming, you know, so rook h1. And eventually, white tried some complications, but it didn't really work. You know, trying to take the knight. And now that he will lose the knight as well, he will be down a rook and still being attacked. White threw in the towel here. All right, guys, any questions so far? All right, uh, no questions, then we'll continue. Uh, let's go over now a game which is the evergreen game. And this is a game you guys might have seen before. Uh, but I was told nobody here showed this game before, so we'll go over it. It's a really true romantic game. Anderson against Dufres Dufresne Jean. 1852. So here's, it was an Evans Gambit. It started with an Evans Gambit. So white played in the spirit of the Gambit, sacrificed the pawns for development. D3, Queen B3, attacking F7, Queen F6, E5, Queen G6, Rook E1, Knight e7, bishop a3, b5, queen takes b5, rook b8, queen a4, bishop b6, knight d2, knight, b, knight bd2, bishop b7, knight e4. So, so far both sides are playing pretty logically, right? White is getting his pieces in the game, black is also defending pretty successfully. Queen f5, bishop takes d3. Queen h5, and here was the kind of a critical moment of the game. Here, uh, you know, Anderson went for a spectacular move, not completely sound, but it became very good uh, in the game because it like created an immortal as a result, right? So white went for this move, knight f6, which... E e6? Oh, knight d6. Well, knight d6, I think we can just take that, probably. And and yeah. yeah. And then you can castle. Okay, I mean, it's wow. also pretty promising. Now, what do you guys think is the best move for white, first of all? Who can tell us what the best move might be in this position? Uh, knight f6? No, knight of 6 is technically a mistake. Oh. Interestingly enough. But it uh, created an immortal. Yeah. Yeah, knight g3 was better, yes. Queen h6, bishop c1, queen here. And then, you know, something like this. And something like this. And white would win like in a routine way. But of course, as Kasparov says, then chess would have lost one of the jewels from its crown. So, you know, knight f6 was played. Gf, ef. And rook g8, good move, counterattacking. And now rook d1 was played. All right, and now question to you guys, a uh, little bit of a challenge. Find the best defense for black here. Rook takes g2, king takes g2. And then queen to g4? No, it's queen takes g4, it's controlled. Oh, queen is there, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the idea is good though. It's if only you can somehow. Well, then queen takes f3. Oh, queen takes f3 was played in the game. Oh. And that allowed white to oh. win beautifully. Oh, okay. So, Ashish. Knight d4, aren't you getting mated with rook takes e7? Oh, yeah. I kind of like queen. Yeah. yeah, no, I mean, um, you're getting mated. What about the other way, though? Well, that's not really. 
95, uh, rook takes c5, yeah, I'm not sure, rook takes f1, king f1. Yeah, rook e95, maybe it's interesting, I don't know. Well, I think there's a simpler way, yes, Adi? Bishop d4, Bishop d4, I don't know, I mean, uh, not. I don't know if you have a big threat here, I mean, maybe I can even play a move like this, I don't know, let's, let's ask, ask the engine just in case. Bishop d4, yeah, bishop d4 would be, yeah, bishop d4 is not too bad, like leads to equal position. What else did you say? Uh, who else suggested a move? So bishop d4 was suggested and... No, knight d4 doesn't work yet, it's a mate. 90, oh yeah, knight, knight e5, right, knight e5. Yeah, knight e5, rook takes e5, rook takes g2, king f1, takes king e1. Yeah, that doesn't work. Yeah, so the best move was rook, well, maybe not the best move, but uh, one of the moves was rook g4. And that would have actually shut down. But actually, Addy, your, your, uh, your move computer likes more. So you actually found a better move here than, than Kasparov. You know, the engine is giving 0, 0 after bishop d4 and after rook g4. It says like bishop e4, white is a little bit better. I mean, anyway, it's complicated, but long story short, black could have defended. But still, white is actually not worse. But bishop d4 is actually a very creative move, and indeed, it's very good. You know, you're setting up queen f3, but you're getting rid of the coordination. So, Addy, good job. You know, very nice. Bishop d4, very nice move. But he took an f3, so who can tell us? Who can tell us? Why was this a mistake? And I'll try to find the beautiful combination for white, which made this game one of the most famous games ever. Uh, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Um, yes, rookie seven, ninety-seven. Now. Uh, I mean, other moves also lose, but I mean, right now there's no point of going over them. I mean, there's also Kasparov's books which cover that, but knight takes e7, king here, bishop f5, if king c6, bishop d7 is mate, and, and then it's a beautiful, called the evergreen game. Don't know exactly why it's called like that, but you can Google and find out. Okay, um, here's another game. This time it's a game that Anderson lost uh, to Morphe. Another one of these romantic ones. So this was a king's game, but also in spirit of romantic. So if knight a5, then we have this. So a6. And now, here we go. Knight takes g5. Exclamation mark. Now white is up a pawn. Still with a nice attack. Knight takes b7, queen takes b7. Uh, and now a5. Alright, what should white play? What was the purpose of a5? Uh, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> it's... Yeah, well, bishop d6 wins more than the pawn. Yeah, bishop d6 was the was the knockout. Yeah, bishop takes d4, c takes d4, queen takes d6, rook f7. Yeah, and white 
one a nice one here as well. Yeah, this one wasn't so special <laughs> compared to the other ones. All right, let's look at a game um, Lasker against Bauer. We'll do it in like chronological order now, like in terms of years. Okay, this one is a pretty famous game actually, Lasker against Bauer. F4, D5, E3, Knight of 6, B3, E6, Bishop B2, I win, by the way, I like to play sim similar structures in blitz games. I win a lot of games in blitz games in some similar attacks. So it's a very interesting setup. I play English defense as black and sometimes I get this structure from the black side. So white finds a very interesting regrouping, knight c3, knight e2, knight g3. And now black made a mistake, knight takes h5. So now question is how should white take advantage? Yeah. Yeah, bishop takes h7, double bishop sacrifice. Very good, double bishop sack, king takes, takes, bishop takes g7, and king takes g7. But is it right away? Because if we go, um, yeah, I think you have to be a bit careful. If we play right away, then yeah, rook g8. No, rook g, yeah, maybe, yeah. And we can try to give up this, this rook, and still we have two pieces, so maybe not completely easily winning. So that's why queen g4 first, because there's no king f6 anyway, because of queen g5. And then we go there. And actually, interestingly enough, this whole combination might have not been that, all that effective unless white would have had this in the end. So this little nuance in the end was actually very important. Otherwise, materially, it would be kind of close. Like, if white does not have that idea, then it's not so clear. But there is this idea. So, that's the point. Yeah, so... Anyway... The rest of the game was pretty simple. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Here it's okay to exchange. Yeah, 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 there's nothing in the other side, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, next game in chronological order is uh, Nimzovich against uh, Alapin. Well, actually, there's also Stainitz Sukertot. Oh, yeah, Stainitz Sukertot, yes. We forgot about that one. Stainitz Sukertot. So, e4, e5, knight c3, knight c6, f4, takes, and then d4. Okay, so this is called actually Stainitz Gambit. The game was quite sharp here. d5. Black goes for some sharpness right away. King f2. Now the funny thing is, this there was a game, Stainless against McKenzie, er, three years ago, which ended like this. King f3, queen h4, threatening here. King back, and queen e7, and king f3 draw. So even from an interesting opening like that, you can still sometimes get draws. So king f2, queen h4, g3, takes, king g2, and now black took on d4. Yeah, there is also bishop d6, which was very, very interesting. With the idea being after this, you can take, and then there's some problems on the attack on the king. 
So knight takes d4 was played. H takes g3. Queen g4. Queen e1. Bishop e7. Uh, here rook h4 was pretty good. Knight takes c2. Well, not, not so easy, but eventually. Queen e5. Queen g6. Rook b1. And then there's still some difficulties. Although... Actually, I mean, that's what Stainis says, but in fact, it was not so clear. So rook h4 was maybe nothing so special. So bishop d3 was pretty good. I mean, just taking away knight takes c2, queen g6, knight f5, knight f3, bishop here, bishop there, f6, knight e4, knight gh6, and uh, bishop takes h6. Yeah, knight h6 was a mistake. That was a blunder. Because after this, 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 you know, you lose the queen. And that's how one of the games ended. That was a world championship match. You know, so as you could see, you know, this style, you know, confuses opponents, could even confuse world champions sometimes, as you could see. All right, um, that was another interesting game. Okay, now let's take a look at the game Nimzovich against Alepin from 1914. Okay, so this was just a casual tournament, e4, e6, d4, d5, knight c3, knight f6, ed, and then Alepin took knight takes d5, which is probably a mistake. Earlier in the earlier lecture, I showed you one of Alekhine's games, which Alekhine won up to knight e4. White played knight f3, which is also a very playable move. c5. So opening up the center, even though he's behind on development, probably not the best idea. Knight takes d5, queen takes d5. Bishop e3, threatening to win the pawn on c5. cd. Knight takes d4. Uh, a6. So the idea is preventing knight b5, but it's too slow. Black is really falling behind on development here. And that's why he's getting really punished. So bishop e2, queen takes here, bishop f3. Again, taking on g2 in such a position is very dangerous. Because again, we're behind in development. It looks like it's safe, but it's in fact not safe. So queen g6, queen d2 e5. All right. How should white continue his initiative in this position? Castling long, very good. Who cares about that piece when we have such a lead in development, right? The most important is just to continue going with the attack. No retreating. E takes, bishop takes. Knight c6. All right. White to play and, com you know, complete the, the triumph. Triumphant strat strategy. Rook where? H G one or E one? Then I'll play uh, Bishop E six, or maybe even yeah, let's play here. Yeah, but okay, it's not. Not so, not so forced, right? I'll go bishop e7. I mean, you might still have a very promising attack, but, you know, here we're looking for something even... I mean, again, if you don't see a forced win, okay, then you go for a move like that, but first we want to see in a position like that, like when black has only one piece developed and we have all pieces developed and black king's in the center, we want to look for a forced win. And sometimes there might be one. Ashish, what do you think? Uh, 
Um, Bishop G7. Yeah, I mean that that might also work. Maybe that also is winning. Well, Bishop takes C6 is the idea. Yeah, so if you take, then Bishop takes C6. Yeah, no, that wins. But I think uh, I think the move he played is even you know more finishing off. Bishop F6. Where did you want to play? Bishop T C six. I think I can do mm, Queen takes C six maybe. What I'm looking at is now the D eight square is Yeah, I mean I guess you yeah, but how do you exactly uh, yeah, that's I mean maybe you can still play Bishop F six here, it's still but I think Bishop F six right away is cleaner. I mean maybe I can do this. Okay, then you go here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Queen takes rook e one. Yeah, I mean, maybe bishop e6, queen d7. So yeah, this move order might also win. Bishop takes e6 first. Well, actually, let's 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 see if it does win, because it looks like it does. But yeah, it probably probably does. Yes, queen takes c6, bishop f6. Well, actually, no, it doesn't. Well, it's not it's not quite the same because after this, there's bishop d6 now. That's the big difference. There's this, this interposition move where you can give back some of the material and it's not so winning. I mean, you can still go bishop takes g7, but then I can play here and give up the rook and still continue playing. I mean, white is completely winning now, but it's still a game. So same thing after bishop takes g7. I could just, you know, give up the rook. I mean, okay, it's a winning position, but not forced win. And by the way, you have to be careful of bishop h6, so, but I guess you can start with this or something. Basically, yeah, you're still winning with bishop takes g7, but bishop f6 is just a knockout. It's total knockout because this followed by queen d8 is a threat. Queen d8 right away is also a threat. So what should black do? I mean, he has to take the bishop. There's nothing else. And uh, let's say if you take, if you go here, for example, there's takes. You know, this, you queen d8. Um, this, you go like that. That's, that's well, it's mate. I mean, it's yeah. Well, uh, that line is. I mean, yeah. Um, so queen f six. Um, rookie one. Uh, yeah. And so bishop e six, queen d seven, and if bishop e7 takes king f8 and now what yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah very good yeah well, anyway, so, uh, so that's that. That was that. Bishop f6 was that key idea. But again, move order is important because if we do it like this, then there is this defense. So that's why it's important to start with this. So precision is always important when we calculate. Even if we're winning, it's still important to to be quite precise. Um, all right, uh, let's do uh, one more, uh, Capablanca Spielmann. It's uh, still close enough to the Romantic period. So, Capablanca was white, d4, d5, knight f3, e6, c4, knight d7, and also we've looked at only e4 games today, but this is going to be a d4 game, which also and here white went for this system cd d queen a4 trying to exchange the bishop so white puts the bishop on c2 to a good square
rook e1. And now he's preparing for e4. Okay, what should white do in this position? Yeah, that's what he did. Yeah, just take the pawn, give up this bishop, and then take this. And then you're going to get three pawns. And the point being, if rook a7, how would white win here? Eddie? Yeah, Ashish? Yeah. Yeah, because you're going to get a new queen here. So you will win a rook. So that's why he had to play rook b8, but then b takes a, a6, so now white will have three pawns, including one very strong passer, and white is completely winning. A very nice combination. Rook b5, queen c7, knight b6, a7, bishop h3, and he just played rook b1, you know, exchanging black's best piece in the position. The rook on b5, black's best defense. Rook takes b, b1, rook takes b1, f5, bishop f3, f4, e takes f4, and black resigned. Black is left with nothing, zilch, nada. Uh, sorry, ah, pressed the wrong thing. Okay. Sorry, okay, if so you. If, if, if uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I'm. Yeah, take the knight first, right? Um, yeah. Okay. And then he takes. Yeah, here anything, right? Queen, oh, you can. Yes. Yeah, so, let's take. Okay. Yeah. Check. Right. Too many ideas, right? From b8. So queen takes c4, just too many ideas. Adi? Uh, I have a question. Like, you know when uh, uh, white uh, played rook like, uh, takes Yeah, sure. Yes. Yeah, one second. Uh, was it here or no? Yes. Yeah. Oh, queen takes a5. Yeah, rook takes a5. Oh, oh, rook a7. Rook a7. This one, right? Okay. Oh, but the queen, queen's hanging. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe. It's a good, good point. Okay, well, the thing is, I still think white is better. Rook takes a6. So then white will have, uh, materially we have uh, two pieces for a rook, but I mean, my pawn is on a7. I'll have three pawns, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four. So I have three pawns and a rook for, th for two pieces. So materially I'm, I'm up, plus I have a very powerful pawn. I'll play f3, e4, so yes. You're right, I mean, that line definitely exists, and you're not losing right away, but, I mean, it, it will be lost. Like, how would you continue in this position? I'm gonna go f3. Yeah, bishop a8, I'll play like rook b1. Then I'll probably play rook d6, and then I'll play rook b8. You know, if you go here, I'm still going rook b8. So there are just too many ideas. I mean, even if I don't have anything immediate, I'm still up material and doing very well. Yeah? Which, what, what would be six? Like, you know, like, 
Yeah. After a few minutes. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's the point. But I can I, I mean I can also do this and then I can give check and then I can play that. Okay, you can defend, but I mean the point is that there are already many ways for white to be much better. The point the point is when you're going for a line like this, right? When you're when you're seeing this, once you see this, you're not really worried about the bishop b7. Sure, it might be a defense, but if this is the best he's gotten then you know you're doing very well, right? Because at the very minimum, you got three pawns, plus like one beast pawn on a7, and two good rooks on open files for his knight and bishop, which are not very coordinated. So materially you're better, positionally you're better, I mean, all the factors are still in your favor. So even if he has defenses like that, you're not, you don't really have to worry about them. But that's still a very good question. I mean, that's still a very good point you made. Yeah, that bishop b7 was a possible defense, but it doesn't really save the game, of course. But yeah, good, good point. That's that was good alert, Addy. Good job. Um, all right. Um, so I'll show you one more quick game, and then we'll that will do it for for today. I'll show you a game, uh, another famous game, Petrosian against uh, Bachmann. So this was a very slow positional game, and even that turned into a very nice fireworks. So this is a good game to finish on, good note. That even a quiet little schematic opening uh, can turn into uh, fireworks. This is what we call King's Indian attack. Yeah, here black played d6, so maybe b6 was more precise, but d6 looks okay. Okay, so now white wants to go knight e4, tempoing on the queen. And now white played knight b3. Interesting move to try to attack the pawn, gain a tempo, and preparing for bishop f4. Black played knight d4. Also a mistake. I mean, again, same mistake as this guy against Alareza was making, right? To those of you who were my viewers. Moving the same pieces twice. He should at least go here. Instead, moving the same piece twice. Shp4. Queen has to already go to a slightly awkward square. And now knight e5, preparing knight c4. And you can already see how black is very cramped here. Very, very cramped. Knight takes b3, and here he doesn't even capture back. He plays first knight c4, and this is a very subtle move based on the fact that after a, b, knight d5, knight c4, there is the move queen c6. And black is kind of keeping control over the game. So that's why he played knight c4 first. And white is just now almost winning. Because now if black plays queen d8, then we go a, b, then we go there, and we prepare rook a5, and this pawn will probably just fall. Somehow. So, black played queen b5, a takes b3, now this rook a5 is a threat. So black had to play another move, a5, which is a little bit wasteful. Bishop d6, bishop f6. And now here comes the queen into the attack. Queen f3, king g7, rook e4, rook d8. And now white to play. How should white continue here? You've seen this? Oh, okay. Oh, I see. <laughs> okay. One idea I'm looking at, but I'm not sure if it's going to work yet. 
Mm-hmm. Bishop takes e7, bishop takes e7. Yeah, and then knight to e5. Uh, rook f8. Yeah, even f6, right? There's like too many options. So yeah, it's certainly a, certainly a possibility, but uh, we can quickly see that it's not going to be anything so special. All right, Ashish, what is it? Uh, queen f6, king f6. Mm -hmm. uh, bishop g5. King g5. Bishop g7. Bishop g7. Very good. That's the key quiet move. Taking away the escape square. And the black is just getting mated. Remember that bishop d4 early on from the viewer's choice? You know, where it took away some escape squares? Same thing here. You know, whenever we're attacking, we always have to look at exit squares. I've listened to enough Larry Christensen videos. Uh, when I was younger on ICC and he always takes talks about and he is like one of the best attacking players of all time in the United States He always talks about taking away the exit squares and here black the black king is doomed and black just resigned There's no way to defend against the mating attack and with that with this beautiful game which started from a very innocent little opening you know even from like like this you can still win a nice miniature game if you if your opponent starts violating some principles so i hope you guys enjoyed it and uh till uh, till next time this is grandmaster alexander lenderman